Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that the true terror in life is an unclicked subscribe button. So, if you spend any time in the same corners of YouTube that I do, you've almost certainly seen this face floating around. Now, you might have seen this and been jump scared, but me? I saw this and thought, new analog horror just dropped? Yo, we gotta go theorize. Yeah, this is from a video called The Boiled One Phenomenon, created by the YouTube channel Dr. Nowhere. And after seeing it pop up, I asked the team if we could react to it over on G. GT Live, and I am so glad that we did. The trumpets oh, and the happy sounds. Blood a, falling out of the sky. That's some classic blood rain right there. And I'm not talking about that bad PS1 era <laughs> game about <laughs> vampire Deep hunters. cut. Spooky. Dr. Nowhere is a creator named Silas Orion, and he's another part of this incredible new wave of young artists making awesome horror content here on YouTube. Think Kane Pixels with the back rooms and unknowingly with the man in the suit. So what is the Boiled One phenomenon? Broad strokes? It's the latest analog horror story about a mysterious broadcast that devastates states a local community. And that's just the beginning. This story smashes together biblical lore with real-life events and a healthy sprinkling of the SCP Foundation on top to make a story about pain, grief, and the end of the world. In it, a horrifying red being causes full-body paralysis, forcing its victims to communicate by blinking Morse code. This one goes to some wild places, and spoiler alert, the Boiled One phenomenon is a warning about the oncoming apocalypse, complete with angels, and blood and the sky opening up. But thankfully, there is hope. And we can find out how to defeat the Boiled One by looking in the most unlikely of places. Grab your pins, paper, and blue light glasses, friends, as we dive into the mystery of the Boiled One phenomenon. So, let's start out with a little recap so we know exactly what happens in this video. The Boiled One is framed as a VHS videotape curated by an organization known as the Afrata Branch. We're warned that the contents of the tape are known to cause severe cognitohazardous conditions. If you don't know, cognitohazards are a real thing. Information that can hurt you just by you knowing it. Like the dark truths of the universe or the loss meme. That means that just watching this video could be dangerous for our health. But thankfully, we're also given instructions on how to best prevent such side effects. For example, if you begin to hear something evil or unholy speaking to you in tongues, you're instructed to plug your ears and write, I can see this paper. I can see my hand. I can't hear the screaming of thousands. I can't hear the feast. I am a moving, breathing human being on on planet Earth. You know, just a normal grounding mantra. Nothing to be too concerned about. We're also instructed to recite the Bible verse Psalm 91.10, which reads, No evil shall befall you and no plague shall come near your dwelling. But after all of that, should any memories or mental imagery of something unholy linger in your mind, contact the authorities immediately. They'll give you some amnestics, drugs meant to make you forget, which can help you appear to lead a normal life. Emphasis on appear. The long and short of this warning, if something bad happens to you here, you're never gonna recover. So that's just swell. We are then shown footage from a local broadcast television program, a documentary centered on educational content about local local woodland plant and animal life. Sadly, this documentary program was taken off of the air after the creator suddenly died in early 2001, which made it strange when an episode aired out of nowhere on August 13th, 2003. Later known as Broadcast 813, named after August 13th, I see what you did there. This particular episode is about the poison oak. It's as beautiful as it is deceptive. However, during this broadcast, something else would hijack the program. Something with a red face that spoke to viewers over top footage of hospitals and bedrooms. And even creepier, everyone who saw this message understood it, even if they didn't speak English. This being is designated Fin228 by the Afrata branch, presumably short for Phenomenon 228. But this is the boiled one. So, what does he have to say? Garbled nonsense, of course. Yeah, what we're shown here is a restored recording of the event, but it's been muffled and reversed by the Afrata branch to suppress any cognitohazardous effects. But I mean, come on, you know us. Of course, we're gonna pop this in an audio editor and reverse it to see what it actually says. Quote, The very memory of my face will cause a manifestation of my being in the future. You will be asleep in bed. I will be there and watch over you. When you wake, you will not be able to move any part of you. When the doctors eventually find you, they will not see me. But you will, and I'll see you too, forever. 
I'll see you. And sure enough, it's exactly what happens. 12 days after broadcast 813, over 500 people who were watching that day suddenly fell into a pseudo coma. This is a real condition also known as locked in syndrome, during which almost all voluntary muscles in a patient's body are paralyzed except for eye movements and blinking. The person is still entirely conscious and even able to communicate with eye movements, but they can't move or speak or do anything else. And the only reason this didn't spread further is because during the broadcast, the Ephrata branch disables all power grids in Pennsylvania, which resulted in the entire northeastern United States losing power. This actually coincides with a real event known as the Northeast Blackout of 2003, which stretched everywhere from New York to Michigan to Ontario and left 50 million people without power. In the real world, the blackout wasn't caused by some conspiracy, but instead by a combination of human error and a software bug causing a local blackout to cast cascade across the entire region. But in the world of the Boiled One, the Afrata branch used the blackout to collect and or delete all footage, news articles, recordings, and internet posts related to Broadcast 813. Shortly afterwards, they also set up interviews with the victims who fell into the pseudocomas, who are able to answer the questions by blinking Morse code. However, what the victims had to say was disturbing, as they described a horrific face that they kept seeing, and that they kept hearing voices and trying trumpets as they fell asleep. Again, exactly what the Boiled One warned us would happen in that reversed audio, and many victims were terminated as a result of the interviews. The screen then cuts to white as we see a silhouette of the Boiled One alongside the text, Wonderful Day, The Miracle of Birth, A Fetal Fanfare, and A Phrase in Japanese. We are then addressed directly by the Boiled One himself, and it's as terrifying as you might imagine. <laughs> He tells us to listen closely and that we will hear the laughter of thousands as the sky opens up, as trumpets play, as the blood of life pours down. He tells us to be still, that there will be a feast fit for a king, and that it is all melded by love. Before the video is cut off and we are instructed to follow all of the protocols laid out to protect us at the beginning of this whole creepy thing. So, okay, that was a lot. For just 10 minutes of content, the Boiled One phenomenon is dense. What the heck? even happened here. Well, a good place to start trying to resolve this mystery would be with all of its religious references. Ideas pulled from Christianity are all over the Boiled One. Yes, we have that Bible verse that we're meant to repeat to protect ourselves, but the documentary that the Boiled One hijacks? Poison Oak, also referred to as the Tree of Heaven. Tree of Heaven, you say? See, this is especially interesting because that isn't actually true. Though the Tree of Heaven is a real plant, and it's part of the same family as the Poison Oak, they are different plants from entirely different parts of the world. Both make you itchy, yes, but poison oaks are native to North America, while the Tree of Heaven is originally from Taiwan and Northeast and Central China. Was that a mistake, or something intentional, letting Dr. Nowhere add another reference to religion here? Additionally, remember the Afrana branch, the SCP-like organization handling this situation? Well, they're also named after a real group. All the way back in 1731, a religious group known as the Afrata Cloister was founded in what is now Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, the same area where this series takes place. Oh, and another big thing that stood out to me, the repeated mention of trumpets. After the broadcast, Zamparini and the other victims heard trumpets before they fell asleep, and at the end there, the Boiled One warned us that trumpets would play their happy sounds. Oh, and also, just an amazing cherry on top here, in the real world, a mysterious glass trumpet was found buried in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Too fragile to be played by humans without damaging it, and it's the only such trumpet ever found in North America. Given how well it was preserved, archaeologists believe that it was buried intentionally, perhaps to hide it. But why does all of this matter? Well, trumpets have a very specific meaning in the Bible. See, in the book of Revelation, the final book in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, we're told about visions of the eventual apocalypse. In them, seven angels sound seven trumpets, with each bringing a new disaster upon the world. One of them burned a third of the planet's trees, perhaps a connection to the dangers of nature and the tree of heaven from the documentary that the Boiled One hijacked. Another would turn a third of the ocean's water into blood, perhaps paralleled by the Boiled One saying that the blood of life will pour down upon us all. 
all. In the video, we even get some pretty gnarly imagery of the sky opening up and blood falling down. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty apocalyptic to me. The boiled one here, he's clearly telling us that the end of the world is upon us. So is that the message here? Is the boiled one foretelling the end of the world? The trumpets have started blowing for the victims, so is the apocalypse on the horizon? That would be pretty cut and dry when it comes to an analog horror series, but that's not everything that's going on here. See, for all of the biblical language and allusions that the boiled one uses here, it's not the only thing hidden in its storyline. Close to the end of the video, before the boiled one speaks directly to the viewer, do you remember that weird white screen with text on top of it? The one that had that passage in Japanese? Well, if you translate that, it reads, Fear the one and only Watanabe bird. And that's not the only place this happens. Earlier in the video, when we're told that even people who didn't speak English understood what the boiled one was saying, we see an image of an eyeball with red text reflected on it. If you reverse this text, you'll find that it's Japanese and that it reads, Afraid of Birds. Now that's a very weird, specific phrase. I knew it had to mean something, and after a bit of digging, I found that it's connected to a very real, very evil person. Mutsuhiro Watanabe was a war criminal and sergeant in the Japanese army during World War II. Specifically, he was a guard at the Omori prison camp holding allied prisoners of war, who nicknamed Watanabe the Bird thus, the Watanabe bird. At Amori, Watanabe committed horrible atrocities, torturing prisoners in his care. Believe me, you don't want to know the specifics. Despite being one of the most wanted war criminals by the Americans, Watanabe would survive the war and evade all punishment for his crimes, living out the rest of his life as an insurance salesman. He eventually died on April 1st, 2003, just a few months before the boiled one takes place in August of that same year. Clearly, what's happened here is that in this story, Watanabe died and became the Boiled One, this dark, evil entity that now physically resembles the monster he was inside. And that part isn't even speculation. Dr. Nowhere confirmed that Watanabe was the inspiration for the monster, and now Watanabe is trying to use the broadcasts like the one we see in this video to continue to spread trauma and pain, just like he did during World War II. And we even get a hint at this through the nature documentary that the Boiled One hijacked. Remember Remember how it misidentified Poison Oak as the Tree of Heaven? Well, one fascinating thing about the Tree of Heaven is that it's an invasive species brought to North America from Asia, spreading its roots to another continent and dominating the natural plants there. That is exactly what the Boiled One is doing here, invading airways, spreading to a new land, and infesting bodies in North America. And now, that pain makes the Boiled One grow. In the very first few frames of the video, we see the monster's body stretch up into the sky, as if he's growing like a tree. That has some really dark implications, right? The more he's hurting people, even in death as this creature, the more strength it gives him to continue doing so. It's a cycle, and perhaps that is what's leading the Boiled One to spark these apocalyptic visions. But that being said, there's another key player in this story that we haven't talked about yet, and it's one that proves that the Boiled One cannot and will not win. Remember the victims of the Boiled One who could communicate through blinking Morse code. One of them is called Job Zamperini, a war vet and devout Christian who is able to connect the dots between his loss of mobility and seeing the Boiled One's face on TV, an image that has not left him since seeing it. Well, just like the Boiled One is based on Watanabe, Job Zamperini is based on other people. The first is the biblical figure Job, a good man who looks well after his family, but is suddenly faced by disaster after disaster, taking away everything he holds dear. Despite these hardships, Job remains faithful to God, which is great because the hardships were actually intended to be a test from God. This very much reflects the Job Zamperini and the Boiled One story. This is a man tormented night and day by the Boiled One. He cannot escape this awful face staring at him at all hours of the day and being told that he will never escape this fate. For the briefest moment during the interview with Job Zamperini, we see red Morse code flash on the screen, which reads, Nobody but me and you. This is the boiled one trying to convince Zamperini that he is alone, that there is no god, and that it's just the two of them from now on. And what does Zamperini do here? Despite his paralysis, this awful situation forced upon him, he remains faithful, just like Job from the Bible. And the second figure that Job is based on? It's actually a real person, one of Watanabe's prisoners, Louis Zamperini. Louis Zamperini was an Olympian athlete turned soldier who fought for the United States in 
World War II. After his plane was shot down in the Pacific, he was taken prisoner by the Japanese and was one of the POWs tortured by Watanabe. Thankfully, Zamperini survived confinement, but he carried the scars from Watanabe's torture, both physical and emotional, for the rest of his life. In interviews following the war, Zamperini admitted to having nightmares about his captors for years after he was released, and only really found relief when he turned to Christianity. Now, obviously, religion isn't the only way to heal from traumatic experiences like this. This is just what worked for Zamperini, and it helped him let go of his pain and move on from his nightmares, to not be paralyzed by them any longer. How? through forgiveness. That is the core message of The Boiled One. This very easily could have been a story about the cycles of pain and how you carry that with you, how it can destroy your life if you let it, how it can leave you bedridden with grief looking the monster in the face at every turn. But that doesn't have to be how you handle that pain or how you deal with the monsters that feed off of it like Watanabe and The Boiled One. The biggest weapon that the people in this world, the Afrata Branch and Joe Zamperini and all of the other victims can use against the Boiled One is forgiveness. Following his release, the real-world Louis Zamperini later returned to Japan specifically to confront his captors. He even tried to meet with Watanabe up until the day Watanabe died, but the bird avoided any and all contact with Zamperini, hoping to not be judged by America. But Zamperini didn't want to hurt Watanabe or any of the others. All he wanted to do was forgive them. That is actually what Zamperini credits to making his nightmare go away. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. My sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The other night.